Hi, this is Hollywood Visual Impact, and this is our quick recap of BSC Expo 2024. BSC this year was packed on the first day on Friday, which made it challenging to get some of the shots, but that's part of the job. There were quite a few nanos around the show, one of them was on an FR7 at the Sony stand, but the 35mm mounted on the Burano at the Zeiss stand gave us a better chance of having a bit of a play with it. Overall, I quite like the new nano primes, the size is just about right for the Burano and the FX6 especially. The weight is very manageable for gimbals and even the wider 18mm still feels quite compact compared to the equivalent in the CP2 and CP3 range, which undoubtedly will draw comparisons to the new nanos. I think the nano primes are totally different lenses with a very different and more pleasing look, especially when it comes to bokeh, but maybe that's just me. The ID stand was very busy as usual with a broad range of equipment on display, including the latest EVO 360 camera stabilizing system and a couple of trinities with what I believe were Alexa minis and signatures. The Addis stand also had a few sky panel X units rigged in single, double and triple configurations with the various diffusion fronts. The latest orbiter beam was also on display and the optical attachment looks absolutely massive. I'm sure there's a technical reason for it since it needs to harness and amplify the power of the orbiter, which in itself is no slouch when it comes to output. At VSC I also had a chance to have a bit of a play with the CCM1 which is something that I was really looking forward to. The dedicated buttons on the side are a nice touch and the ergonomics are on point, in addition to the build quality which there's not even a point of even mentioning, I mean this is after all an Airy product. The monitor itself was designed in partnership with Small HD, and if you've ever used any of the higher end Small HD monitors you'll feel right at home here. I found the menu to be quite responsive and very easy to navigate. Moving on to the Sony stand, they had a few Venice cameras and of course the Sony Burano alongside a few FX6 handheld rigs. Nicely rigged with some bright tangerine kit. There are also quite a few Vocus accessories on the cameras, including their popular wooden handles, as well as the new Vocus EVF pivot for the Burano, which lets you easily adjust the monitor to suit your shooting style. At the Vocus stand, we also got a demo of their latest case cart, which is an affordable and handy onset solution for rigging cameras and drones. The removable wheels are a nice touch, while the HPRC hard case protects the cart and makes it easy to transport on set. But what really caught our eye at the Sony booth was the race to rig the Rialto game at the center of the booth. This was quite hard to do, as anyone who's ever attempted or used wheels before knows. It's hard to get your coordination right, but nevertheless this was a very fun game and it got the attention of the crowd. Speaking of accessories, the Burano accessories were omnipresent throughout the show at various stands. The Sony stand, for example, had a Burano with an IDPCA cage. The camera itself had a Mini Hawk 80mm anamorphic lens, which is absolutely stunning, with an impressive close focus and a gorgeous cinematic look. Bright Tangerine also showed off their new Left Field 3 Burano kits, available in two styles. A Cine style, compatible with the Bud style bottom plate for studio work, as well as a VCT based kit for handheld documentary style. The monitor mount is now redesigned with 19mm rods and the side plates and top handle gives you plenty of additional mounting points, while the new monitor straight loop actually will give you access to the touchscreen without having to flip the loop, which is a very nice touch. Crozeal was also at BSC showing off their new accessories for the Sony Burano, which included a cage system with a top handle, side plates and an electronic E to PL adapter with power and control for broadcast lenses. The mount also features a 12-pin high-rose connector, making it possible to use the Burano with ENG servo lenses. Another nice touch is the top handle, which offers toolless removal and adjustment, which can save you a lot of time on set. Moving on to lenses, there were quite a few at the show, all the way from the very top end to more budget-friendly offerings and just about everything in between. Sigma had their 65mm high-speed Cineprime on a Venice, and scattered throughout the show were some of the up-and-coming brands such as DZO Films who had their Pavo anamorphic range on display. Very nice lenses, um, two times anamorphic look, controlled breathing and really good build quality. These are designed for Super 35mm sensors but the cool thing here is that you can choose between two sets depending on what sort of uh, streak you prefer, one being neutral and the other one being blue in color. GeckoCam brought a bunch of lenses to BSC, uh, including their Genesis G35, G65 and their latest Opia range, which was actually probably my favorite bit of kit that I saw at the show. The lens set includes a total of 14 focal lengths, starting at 18mm all the way to 210 all at 
They offer full frame sensor coverage. Uh, they have a very cinematic and organic look. This is actually achieved thanks to their all spherical elements design. Uh, they also have a 95 mil front uh, across the range, a very close focus distance of 20 centimeters and 30 centimeters, uh, depending on the focal length. And they are fully LPL mount compatible, meaning that you can use them on the new Alexa 35 and whatever other cameras will have an LPL mount in the future. At the Gecko Cam stand, I also had a quick look at their Sony LPL mount for Venice cameras, very solid piece of kit, aircraft aluminum, stainless steel, rock solid mount. It uh, replaces the PL mount of the Venice and it provides a reliable mount for LPL lenses such as the signature primes and zooms. Moving on to more lighting related kit, uh, there were a few really interesting lights I saw at the Zero Light stand. Another interesting light, or rather lights, that caught my attention were from a brand that I wasn't really familiar with called Fion Lux. Their inflatable Air Lux fixtures are super light and riggable in almost unlimited ways. Uh, they come with a gel library, lumen radio and Bluetooth support. They also have an app, which can be very useful for overhead lighting, tight spaces, documentaries, uh, low budget drama and just countless other um, situations. Aperture showed off their latest Electrostorm series, including the XT26 and the CS15 models with the F14 Fresnel and the dedicated motorized yoke for these two new powerful fixtures. The high output XT26 is quite a beast. Uh, it's rated at uh, 2600 watts, uh, has advanced liquid cooling and water resistant construction. Uh, Nanlite had a busy stand with some of their most powerful and popular fixtures on display, including their Cinestyle Nanlux range of high power point source LEDs, including the Evoque 2400 and 1200, as well as the Dino series panels. Over at the Blackmagic stand, you could actually see and get your hands on on the new Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K alongside a couple of DaVinci Resolve stations with the Resolve mini panel. Uh, so you can actually get a much better control interface for working in Resolve. And last but certainly not least, the camera grip section of the show was quite extensive, given this is an exhibition targeting professionals working in the motion picture industry. For example, Grip Factory Munich had their Primo Ultra Dolly on display as well as their solo tracks for sliders, which are excellent, uh, excellent pieces of kit for sort of high-end cinema gear. All in all, BSC 2024 was packed with enthusiasm uh, and it's, it's, it's always a fantastic venue to get together with friends, colleagues, partners, customers, all while checking out the latest and greatest. That's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this recap. Um, it was a bit longer than expected, um, but if you were at BSC, do let me know in the comments below what kit caught your eye or maybe something that I missed completely.